technically Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was just about the winner in this election, but it didn't feel that way. After weeks where the polls had suggested a clear victory for his right-wing Likud Betenu bloc, his support dwindled and Mr Netanyahu now faces a struggle to form a government. Our main priority is strong security in the face of the great challenges before us. And the first challenge is, and remains, preventing Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons. Voters seem to focus on social issues, the cost of living and the economy. Among the main benefactors was Yair Lapid and his centrist future party. He's a former journalist and a newcomer to politics. Great responsibility was laid upon our shoulders tonight. There was one sentence echoed throughout the election campaign. From Kriyat Shmona to Starod, from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv, from Metula to Elat. Everywhere we stopped, there was always someone who stood up and said, don't forget us when you get there. The man who many had said would be the rising star of this election, Naftali Bennett, a software millionaire who's to the right of Mr Netanyahu, doesn't seem to have hit the heights his supporters had been hoping for. But like the leaders of just about all the parties, he'll be in the mix to get a place in a future coalition of some sort. For Israel's political parties, the fight for votes is now over. Election night itself proved far more exciting than a rather lacklustre campaign had suggested. But the country now faces weeks of political horse trading so that somebody can try and build a coalition and form a government. Benjamin Netanyahu is still the best place to form that government, but his aura of invincibility has gone. The question is, will he look to the right, to the centre, or maybe both, to help him out? The choices made in the coming weeks will determine the direction Israel takes in an ever-volatile and unpredictable Middle East. John Donison, BBC News, in central Israel.